This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. How we thank God again for the opportunity to gather in God's presence. And although we may not be in the physical building, but God has made a way for us to gather virtually tonight. And tonight we are going to gather to give God the praise, the glory, and the on honor that God deserves. Welcome to our Spring Forward Revival. Listen, we are on the edge of a major transition. The seasons are changing. The temperatures are getting warmer. The flowers are starting to sprout up and pollen is covering everything in sight. And we can see that God is shifting some things in the natural realm as well as the spiritual realm. And we are getting ready as people of God to spring forward, spring into our destinies, our next levels, spring into what God has for us. And so I encourage you, as you participate in worship tonight, let God strengthen you and encourage you because you are about to go to a new level. Tonight, we welcome the Reverend Dr. Herbert L. Jenkins, Sr. Herbert is the pastor of St. Luke AME Church right there in downtown Hollywood, South Carolina. And we are so glad that he is going to preach a word tonight to get us excited about springing forward into the places that God desires for us to be. Herbert is married to the wonderful Kelly Jenkins, and together they have four beautiful children, Janae, Herbert Jr., Anderson, and Baby Miles. Dr. Jenkins is more than a pastor. He is more than a friend. He is my brother. And when the Lord placed this revival on my heart, there was no one else I could think of to have share in this first Spring Forward revival than the Reverend Dr. Herbert Jenkins. Now, Pine Grove, I know Dr. Jenkins and his lovely wife and family are watching tonight. So can we help welcome them virtually to Pine Grove AME Church? Can you show them some love in the chat as we prepare to worship the Lord.
as we get ready to hear a word of the Lord, let us bow to invite God to speak to us. Let us pray. God, how we give you thanks and praise for another time to gather in your holy name. God, we know that there is no one like you. Who is like the Lord, the psalmist declares. And God, we can boldly testify that no one is like you. You are the great I am. You are, oh God, the creator of the universe. And you hold all power in your hands. And so tonight, God, we gather to lift you a little higher. We gather to worship and to praise your most holy name. We gather tonight just to say thank you. Thank you for being such a good God. Thank you for helping us this day. Thank you for providing the grace and the mercy that we need to make it. Thank you, oh God, for protecting us and for healing us. Thank you, God, for being God. And now, God, tonight we gather as empty pictures at a full fountain. We pray, O oh God, that you will pour back into us all that we need for the journey of these coming days. God, we pray that you will bless your preacher now. We need to hear a word from you. We are not just looking for good information, but we're looking for a Holy Ghost impartation. Speak to us tonight so that our lives will be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Speak to us tonight so that we might be able to run on to see what the end is going to be. God, speak to us tonight through your servant, Dr. Herbert L. Jenkins. And God instruct us on how to spring forward to the places that you desire for us to be. Here we are, God. Revive our souls again. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Redeemer, we all say amen and amen.
Let the church say amen and let the church say amen again. Truly, we are grateful to worship in such an amazing atmosphere. Whether we are in person or whether it is virtual, we know that God is still in the place and we are grateful for his power, for his presence, for his love. Uh, we want to thank God for this moment, this opportunity, this worship here. And we know that God continues to bless us through everything that we have experienced last year, this year, and even beyond what we have already experienced. We know God is with us and God is still in the blessing business. At this time now, I want to thank Reverend James Dennis, the pastor of Pine Grove AME Church, for the opportunity uh, to preach, for the opportunity to bring a word at this Spring Forward Revival. I want to thank all the officers, members, and leaders of Pine Grove AME and, and any minister, ministers on the ministerial staff. I want to thank everyone who serves in their capacity, and I want you to continue to trust in God and follow the vision. You have an amazing pastor, and I know God will continue to bless you with him. And sir, I want to let you know that I, I am grateful to you, and I consider you not just a colleague, but my friend. As well, we want to thank First Lady Jocelyn Dennis as well. Thank you for your love and for your support. I thank you for uplifting your husband and support. And thank you for the ministry that you bring as well. Uh, now, of course, I would be remiss if I did not thank St. Luke AME Church in downtown Hollywood uh, for this opportunity and for the love that they show me each and every day. Thank you for your prayers, for your support, for your love. Thank you for your comfort and your joy. Thank you for just being uniquely who God made you to be. I want to thank Reverend Dr. Serena Freeman, retired pastor of the AME Church, and the Reverend John Alston, retired pastor of the AME Church, who, is, who both serve as associate ministers at St. Luke. I want to thank all Lysetic Cecilia Jenkins, who is also our Minister of Music and the Edisto District Music Director as well. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your love and for your creativity. I want to thank all of our musicians and I want to thank our membership, my leaders, our officers, our members, each and every one of you are a blessing and a godsend and I thank God for you and continue to pray for you. And now, of course, I want to thank my family, my daughter, Janae, my son, Herbert, my son, Anderson, my son, Miles, and my wife, Kelly, First Lady Kelly Jenkins of St. Luke AME Church. I want you to know that I love each and every one of you and I appreciate you. Now, there's a word from the Lord, so let us pray together. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. We ask, Lord, now that you send us down a word, a word to excite us and ignite us. Make me invisible so I may not be seen, yet only you be seen. Make me inaudible so I may not be heard, yet only you be heard. Because it's all about you and it's not about me. In Jesus' name, amen. For our Spring Forward Revival, our scripture comes from the book of Matthew, 4th chapter, verses 1 through 11. Matthew 4, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. And Jesus answered, It is read, written that man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you, and they will lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give you, he said, if you bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and the angels came and attended him. For our, our sermon for tonight, for this spring forward revival, I'm coming from the thought, Through it all, I'm better for it. I have a lot of fond memories of my childhood, one of which is that of my mom and her cooking. And not just her cooking, but her amazing skills of baking. My mom was an amazing cook, and well, she still is an amazing cook, but her baking as well was second to none. 
I used to love being in the kitchen with her and watching her make chocolate cakes or, or cheesecakes or pound cakes or pineapple upside down cakes. Any cake that you could imagine, my mom practiced with us and learned how to make them and they were amazing. They never disappointed. Just talking about it now makes me want to, to ask her to bake me a cake real quick. <laughs> But it was always fun growing up watching her in the kitchen because she would let us help with the ingredients. We would get to pour in everything and mix everything. And it was just a lot of fun to celebrate and be a part of the joy of making a delicious cake. And when she had put everything in the oven, my brother and I got to lick the spoon and clean out the bowl and we got to have all the extra sweets. Nothing went to waste in that kitchen. As I grew older, I got the chance to even start baking myself. And so, I, you know, I've, I've learned a few things from my mother and I'm grateful for it. It's been a while, so I need to go back and learn a few more things. But I had a blast learning how to bake. And regardless, one thing I learned about making a cake is that it takes a lot of steps. But beyond those steps, beyond the ingredients and the order of, of things you must do to make a cake, it also takes patience careful measuring, persistence, and a desire to get the best outcome. It's time-consuming, and it requires a rundown of everything necessary to make it, and it also requires your time. I think about her cake often and how something so amazing can come from so many different ingredients that probably wouldn't taste all that good by themselves. Uh, but once you put all of those ingredients together, the eggs, the sugar, the flour, the butter, and the milk, and all of these other amazing things, once you put those things together, all you need to make that cake is a little time and a little heat. You know, our lives are just like cake. We want to see the best outcome. We want to see the beauty of everything, but it takes time to get to that place of sweetness, and that time takes time to get to that place of beauty. Not only does it take time to get there, but we also have to deal with some heat from that oven. And the heat in our oven of our, of our lives are the struggles and the issues that may even make us or break us. Some uncomfortable temperatures we have to deal with that could possibly destroy everything that we've worked for. But if we use the heat we've been given correctly, that heat can create something beautiful within us. Right now, we're in the season of Lent. This is the season of heat, a season of time, a season of waiting. This is a season that challenges our day-to-day -day living as Christians. It pushes us to see that not only are we strong enough to get through the challenges of our lives, but then we become better for the challenges that we face. Lent is a season of 40 days that lasts between Ash Wednesday and Holy Saturday, and it's a time to sacrifice for the sake of our relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. During Lent, we take time to reflect and grow closer to Christ by traditionally giving up something that we love to have but don't necessarily need. Some of us may choose to apply something to our lives instead of just giving something up. Uh, but as we look, Lent's 40 days are represented from the scriptures we've read today. Lent's 40 days are representative of the 40 days that Jesus was tempted in the wilderness. Jesus was overtaken by his human side, and he found himself hungry. And the devil began to tempt him and challenge not only his discipline, but also challenge his faith and his trust in God. The truth is, during Lent, we find ourselves struggling with some temptations. The things we give up, we find them on our minds more so than we would like to, just because we know we can't have them anymore. It can be a great challenge to resist those urges, but in those times of temptation, we should find ourselves just like Jesus, focusing on Scripture, praying to God, and finding strength through the faith that we have in Him. The truth about our scriptures is that it's not just during Lent that we're tempted. We're tempted and tried almost every day by the enemy. We're pushed to our limits sometimes by the things that people say and do with us, about us, or to us. It seems like day in and day out, our faith and our patience is put to the test. We find ourselves facing the challenges of life and often we end up being pulled in every direction. But in truth, life is full of challenge and temptation, yet we are still better for the things that we face. I've realized in my short life that the challenges I face have and continue to mold me into the Christian that I am today.
And I would, I would be so bold as to say that I could guarantee that you have become a better Christian, not because of every good thing that happened to you, but because of every challenge and every struggle that you had to push your way through. The tests of my faith that came may, uh, my way may not always be fantastic and they may not always be fun. And the things you experience may not always be amazing and wonderful, but they always teach us something about ourselves. I've learned more about the power of God in my deepest and loneliest valleys than on the mountaintops of blessings. I've come closer to Jesus through my challenges and through my hard times than I did from my blessings and my good days. I know that we don't always like the battles that we have to fight or the struggles that we have to face. I know we don't like the storms and I know we don't like the bad days. I know we don't care for the sicknesses. I know we don't care about the for the pandemic and I know we don't Warrior, want to have to worry about our stresses and our anxieties, but we don't have to like it to appreciate it. We don't have to like our bad days to appreciate the good days that come from them. We don't have to like our struggles to be grateful for the positive outcomes that come from those struggles. Church, we don't need to know when those challenges will end in order for us to see what God is revealing to us in the midst of our struggles. Today, I want to remind us that as we celebrate in this spring forward revival, that we are better for the challenges that we face. And as we face the challenges of each new day as a church family, we can put our trust in God and the vision that he has for each of us. Therefore, allow me to extend one point, one thing to internalize as we live our lives for Christ and strengthen our relationship. My only point today is that our struggles draw us nearer to the source of our strength. Our struggles draw us nearer to the source of our strength. Now, I love the New Testament, but I I especially love learning about the Old Testament. I I love looking at words in Hebrew and and dissecting them and breaking them down. And and when I, I look at verbs in Hebrew, they all are created in a unique fashion. Verbs in Hebrew are typically created from three Hebrew letters of the Aleph Bet, and those three letters are called a shoresh, whichever three that are combined to make a verb are called a shoresh. And that shoresh actually has a unique definition for what it means. For example, uh, the word, the verb write in Hebrew, the shoresh for it does not mean to write, it means to cut. And so that is because the original writings were done on tablets and so they would cut stone in order to create those letters. Now the shoresh for sacrifice, the shoresh for the word sacrifice does not mean to give up something. The shoresh for sacrifice means to draw near. And so what we must understand is that as we sacrifice for the Lord, it's not for the sake of giving something up. It's not for the sake of adding something to our experience. Rather, it is all about drawing closer to God. And sacrifices can make us weak. When we sacrifice something, we find ourselves toiling, we find ourselves struggling. If you have given up something for Lent, if you have sacrificed something that you love, you have found yourself struggling on more than one occasion. And that's what sacrifices do. And struggles end up coming our way. And struggles are designed to bend us and to sap us of our energy and sap us of our strength. The the struggles we go through were designed by the enemy to break us down. He created them in hopes that it would destroy us, that it would hurt us, that would damage our faith in God and even make us weak or perhaps even lose our faith. But even though they were designed that way, God had a plan for each struggle to not only make us stronger, but also draw us nearer to God. The truth is when my trials come, I've learned to thank God for the challenge because I realized that God had something greater in mind for me than what the enemy had in mind for me. I I thank God for my challenges because I realized that God had something greater in mind than what 
people had in mind for me. Don't you know that the enemy's attempt is just a plot twist towards God's greater for your life? Everything that we experience, whether it be good or whether it be bad, God has planned and designed for it to draw us closer to him. I'm so glad that every attempt the enemy made on my life to destroy me, God made a plan to deliver me. I'm only here today because of the goodness and the power of the Lord. And and I know that there's someone on this line right now, someone watching this right now that can say that had it not been for the Lord, they wouldn't be where they are right now. Uh, You need to know right now that even though you may be dealing with stress and dealing with trouble, even though you may be dealing with loss and anger, even though you may not know what God has planned for the next chapter, you can trust that God will bring you out of the fire and make you shine like gold. Church, it's time that we understood the value of our scripture lesson today. We must understand that Jesus was being more than tempted and Jesus was being more than tested. He was also sacrificing for the Lord. He was fasting so that he would find a greater strength in God. And the moment the devil noticed his hunger, he stepped in his path to distract him and break his concentration. Now, isn't that just like the devil? To notice our weakness in moments and and attempt to exploit us. He knows where our weaknesses lie. He knows where we are weak and, and he will stop at nothing to destroy any relationship with God that we attempt to build. But in scripture, Jesus knew that there was more to his life than the hunger that he felt. He understood there was more to his ministry than his faith and his, it more, there was more to his ministry and his faith than just an empty stomach. He knew that in a moment of weakness, though the enemy would find him, Jesus also knew he would find strength in the Lord. And the truth is, church, that we must start getting comfortable sacrificing to the Lord. We must get comfortable through the struggles that come. We must get comfortable understanding that we may find ourselves weak on the journey. And in our weakness, we will find that God will always be our strength. Some may never know what we've been through or struggled with. Some may never see the pain and the issues we deal with. Some may never realize the betrayals and the problems that hide behind our everyday smile. But the truth is God is there to lift us up. He's there to heal us and help us. God is there to make us new and show us a more excellent way. And we must understand that just as all the things Jesus went through and encountered with his human weakness, so too must we consider our own humanity, consider our own limitations, our own weakness, and know that in order to get beyond where we are, in order to be better for everything that made us weak. We must trust in God to make us strong. Jesus never gave in to his temptations, never focused on those wants, and kept his eyes focused on the end. And after his time in the wilderness, he emerged and began to work to complete his perfect ministry. You need to know today that you're being tempted, tested, and tried because there's something better on the other side. You need to know today that that you are struggling, pushing, and fighting because once you get to that something better on the other side, you'll realize that not only is it better on the other side, but you're better for it too. You'll realize that you're made better. The The enemy may take you low, but Jesus has raised us up. The enemy wore you out, but Jesus filled you up. Satan tried to lock you in, but God set you free. Jesus sacrificed his life on the cross for you and I to see the power of the Lord. He died on the cross for the sake of our souls, and that alone is enough to say that I am better for every valley I've had to climb. I'm better for every storm that I had to sail. I'm better for every door that I've had to push through and through it all we can say that we're better we're wiser and we're stronger through it all we're better for it better worshipers better believers better christians better servants and because of jesus we can say that it is worth it i need you to know that no matter what you're going through it's better on the other side just keep on holding on to the lord just keep on pushing one day at a time don't worry about tomorrow just worry about today 
today. Keep pushing until you get to the other side and you will realize that through your pushing, God made you better. Through your pushing, God made you stronger. Through your pushing, God made you wiser. And through it all, you'll be able to say that if I made it, you can make it too. I'm here to let somebody know that here in the midst of this revival, in the midst of this moment in time, you don't need to give up on what God has promised you. Don't give up on what God already told you will come to pass, but trust and believe in the Lord. Call on his name, hold his hand, and push through to the other side. I need somebody to know that because of everything you've been through, you are now better. Because of everything you've been through, you're stronger. Because of everything you've experienced, you're greater. And now you can give your praise to the Lord and don't worry about what the enemy might do. Just keep on keeping on. Just keep holding on to his unchanging hand. Just tell the Lord, thank you for this new day. Just let somebody in this place know that had it not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be today? I'm here to give somebody some hope. Hope for tomorrow. Hope for today. Hope for yesterday. Hope for a week from now. Hope for 2022. Hope for everything that we will experience. Don't worry about what you're sacrificing. Don't worry about where you're weak. Don't worry about your struggles. Just trust in God. Trust he will make you strong. Trust he will make you better. Trust he will help you and heal you. And through it all, you'll be able to say that you have made it. I need somebody to understand that we've already talked about how good it is to have some cake and put it all, put all the ingredients together to make something truly delicious. But when that cake comes out of the oven, I didn't tell you about the best part. The best part of that cake is when my mom took it out of the oven and then she went into the cupboard and she got something called icing and she put that icing all over the cake. I need you to understand that every ingredient to the cake, your problems, your stresses, your struggles, your good days, your bad days, your happiness, your peace, your joy, all of these things were put into this oven and created who you are today. But then Jesus was the icing on the cake because he saved you from, uh, from a life that you at first was not worth living. He saved you from every toil and temptation of the enemy. He saved us from a a death that we could not escape. He saved us so that we could have life and life more abundantly. And I'm here to let somebody know that you and I are better because of the Lord. Hallelujah. We thank God for this moment. We thank God for every experience. And we trust and believe right now that God will touch us and protect us and make us new again. Continue to trust and go in peace, understanding that the Lord is always with us. And because of him, every day we are better. Can we thank God for that message? And can we thank God for the messenger? You know, Pastor Jenkins gave us a word tonight and that word may have resonated with you. You might be in life's oven. You may have all the ingredients, but you might be in the season of waiting and you might be in a season of preparation. If that's you tonight, I want to encourage you just like our preacher did. Don't give up on God. Don't give up on the process. Don't give up on what God has you going through. Because the Bible says that when we are tried by the fire, God has a way of pushing us all out of the fire as pure gold. Can I tell you something that I really believe? God has something in store for you. Oh, your minds cannot conceive of, perceive of it right now, but God have something in store for you. I know what the bills say, but God have something in store for you. I know what the doctors have said, but God have something in store for you. I know the picture that your circumstances paint, but God have something in store for you. And if you just hold on, you will reap. If you faint not, listen, if you need prayer, I want you to reach out to, to me, reach out to the church 
And I know that there will be someone who will pray with you, who's willing to walk with you on this spiritual journey. Give me an email, Pastor James at pinegroveame.church. And I know that God will give you all that you need to endure this season of waiting and preparation. Let us pray. God, how we thank you. How we thank you for giving us all that we need to endure these times of waiting and preparation. We thank you for the word that we've heard tonight. And we thank you, God, that you care so much about us that you will develop us and craft us and put every ingredient that needs to be placed in us and you will put us in life's oven until we get just right, just done. And then you will shower us with the icings of your grace and your favor and send us out into the world. And so, God, here we are. Melt us and mold us. Shape us into the people that you desire for us to be. We submit our wills. We submit our plans. We submit everything that we think that we are in charge of. And we lay them down at your feet. And we pray, God, you have your way in our lives. Lives. We can't do nothing until you empower us to do it. We can't do nothing until you give us the strength and the wisdom and the courage and the power to do it. In fact, we cannot do anything without you. So God, come, Holy Spirit, come and make us into the people that you desire for us to be. Now, God, if there's a man, woman, boy, or girl that is under the sound of this voice who needs to know more about you, won't you prick their hearts tonight? Won't you talk with them? And won't you send them to Pine Grove so that we can help them connect their lives to your power source. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. We all say amen and amen and amen. It is giving time in the house of the Lord and I'm so excited about giving because I know that when we give to God, God prepares to give back to us. And so I want to ask that you join me in a special love offering of $30, $30, Dollars. That's $10 each night. And I know that if you participate in this offering, that God would do what the scripture said that God would do, that God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive it. You know, portions of our offerings for this revival will go to our Women's Missionary Society as they partner with Family Promise. Through Family Promise, Pine Grove AME Church has been able to feed and shelter homeless families. And so we are grateful for the opportunity to continue this partnership. And we are grateful for God's call to make a difference in these families' lives. And so we give tonight not to make anybody richer, not to uh, hoard money in our treasury, but we give so that we can be a blessing to families who are struggling just like we are in this pandemic. They need our help. They need our resources. And we give in this revival service to help them get back on their feet. And I know that God will bless our efforts. Whenever we get together and come together as a church to help other people, God cannot help but to put more resources in our hands so that we can go out in our community and become the living word of God. Christ. So won't you help me? Won't you help me shelter and feed these families? A portion of our offering for this revival will go to Family Promise. And I know that we will bless people 
because of our giving. Won't you raise your gifts to the Lord as you prepare your gifts? You can give on our website at www.pinegroveame.church. You can click on the giving tab and it will take you to our giving platforms. You can give on Giveify or on Subsplash, or you can drop your gifts out here at the church at 120 Stewart Drive, Columbia, South Carolina, 29210. And because of your giving, there will be meat in God's storehouse so that we can share with our Pine Grove community. Raise your gifts to the Lord and let us make this bold declaration that our gifts will go towards the planting, growing, and the cultivating of the seeds of the gospel in our church and in our community. And we know that God will give us the harvest. Wow, this has been a phenomenal first night of our Spring for Revival. I know that you have been blessed because I have been blessed tonight. I want to thank our praise team, our musicians. I want to thank uh, Reverend Dr. Herbert L. Jenkins and his family, as well as the St. Luke AME church family. Listen, I don't know, St. Luke, how you do it because you have a fantastic preacher. And I know every Sunday he is feeding you from the master's table. And so we thank you, Pastor Jenkins, for your humility, for your uh, grace that you have offered us. And we thank you for being willing to be the mouthpiece of God on this first night of revival. Listen, y'all, we're going to the next level tomorrow night. The Reverend Surendria Robinson from Mount Olive AME Church will be our guest preacher. And I know that there's another word from the Lord for you. Listen, get some rest. We'll see you tomorrow night. And I know that when, until we gather again, God will give you his love. He will give you his kindness and he will keep you in perfect peace. I'll see you tomorrow night. Be blessed. Thank mm -hmm. you.